223 is C+. Is it C+? Plus? It might C be C. Plus. It's one of the C languages. <laughs> As you can see, it was really helpful for me because I don't remember. <laughs> and then you're like me and you get an elect student to teach you everything the night before the exam. <laughs> it's like, wow, I feel like I'm doing something when really I'm not really doing anything. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. But throughout my second year, I always wondered what second year was like for all the other engineering programs at UBC. So I reached out to a bunch of people, and in this video, we'll be covering almost everything you need to know before heading into second year biomedical engineering at UBC. Timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. And without further ado, let's dive into second year biomedical engineering. Hi, my name is Rachel. I just finished my second year of biomedical engineering. My program chose me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I underestimated how much I missed biology. My, my top choice was iGen. And I was like, oh yeah, you can like do anything in iGen. I could put biomedical with anything. No, that's not how iGen works. <laughs> so it's a good thing they put me in, in BMIG because that's where I belong. Okay, in total, I took 11 courses. I took six in first semester and five in second semester. First semester was 21 credits. That was a lot. <laughs> it was really a lot. Semester two was, I think mine was 17 credits, but it kind of fluctuates depending on if you're dropping courses or if um, you're taking extra upper, upper level courses. Like I took a fourth year course in second term. Um, just to get it out of the way, but okay. it really depends. People tend to do their own thing in second semester. Huh, that's a rough one. Um, the content is hard. It's, it's thermodynamics, it's hard. And the teaching of it is not great. Like the prof is very nice. She has so many office hours. You go to her and if you ask her a question yourself, you'll understand. Lectures are kind of hard to follow. That course had two midterms and one final. They were rough, but they're doable. If you study, you know what to do. <gasps> My favorite course. I love this course. Pavel Kudzia, if you're watching this, I love you. Um, he's my favorite prof, and every time I see him, I feel like I'm seeing a celebrity. That course is biomechanics, super fun. It's mechanics from first year applied to your joints of your legs. That course is really cool if you have Pavel because he'll take you on field trips, and you also get to do a really big project at the end of the semester where you like optimize um, some sort of biomechanical movement. Loved, loved, loved that course. There were two midterms, one final. I failed one of the midterms and then I got an A on the final. So I feel like the, the course overall, it's really stellar. I have no complaints about that course. They make 245. That's a good one too. I really liked this course, but you're not gonna like this course if you did not like high school biology, because it's very much an extension of like grade 12 biology. It is all memorization. There's no final, there's three midterms. So you have one midterm during finals week, but the, it's nice because you don't have to memorize four months worth of content. It's just like every six weeks you can rem like have it and then forget about it. There's also three profs for this course. Like there's a different prof for each section because it's so niche. But yeah, all the profs are really great for this course. It's just a matter of don't fall behind because if you fall behind, you will have a lot of catching up to do and read the textbook. <laughs> read the textbook before you go to class. That's the lesson I learned during that course. I did not have fun in CPEN. Fun fact, when I started university, I wanted to major in CPEN. And I'm really glad I didn't because that course nearly killed me. So we have the option between 221 and 223 and you can take 221 if you're planning on specializing in systems and sig signals or some sort of like bioinformatics because it's more helpful for that. But if you can avoid it, don't take 221. Everyone that I've ever talked to who's taken it said it's the worst course they've ever taken. Not because it's disorganized like 250 is, it's just because the workload is insane and it's also java i don't know much about coding but i do know that java sucks <laughs> but yeah 223 is c plus is it c plus it might c be c plus. it's one of the c languages <laughs> as you can see it was really helpful for me because i don't remember but that course had two midterms one final 
they were okay. I think I did well on the final because I went to a concert the night before. So <laughs> take that as you will. <laughs> yeah, that, that course is, is a lot of work. You need to learn how to study for coding. Mark, fun fact about me and Mark McLean. I've actually um, had him as a prof before, not officially. In first year for Math 100, I had a prof and it was so bad. That math course was so bad. I went to lecture for three weeks before giving up. And then I realized that Mark McLean's online lecture section was at the exact date and time that my lecture section was. So I started skipping mine and going to Mark's and I have Mark McLean to thank for passing math 100 because otherwise I would not have. So needless to say, I think he's a great prof. I thought, Math 253 was really straightforward in lecture, not so much during the assignments, so I probably should have studied a little more for that, but I did pass the course, so it's okay. That course is, it's standard. I feel like there's there's not much to say about it. Like if you really like math, you'll, you'll like that course, but otherwise it's just kind of like, well, it's something you do, so you understand like a third year course. Math 256, wow. Those were great lectures. I had Neil Baumforth, Dr. Neil Baumforth. I love that guy, he's so funny. Multiple times during lecture, he would solve a problem and he, then he'd say, okay, now let's see what ChatGPT has to say. <laughs> and he would get ChatGPT to solve it. I remember so vividly one lecture, he just, he looked at it for a second like this and then he went, wrong. I also appreciated that he would get people to come to the front of the room and try and solve problems. I feel like that, that was really engaging. I'm really glad I wasn't one of the people who was picked though. That course is also pretty standard. Like if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you're in trouble. And then you're like me and you get an elect student to teach you everything the night before the exam. My final was a crime against humanity. It yeah, really was. I walked out of that final and I was like, that shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> right at the end of the exam, my, my friend Ellie was sitting like, a row away from me and I just look over at her and we both make eye contact and start laughing hysterically because we knew we had done so bad on that exam. It was, it was a good time. That was cathartic. So BMIG 201, it's a three credit course. It's just like three hours of a lecture a week. It's super chill. Everyone calls it like you don't need to study for it kind of course. I would definitely agree. It feels like a high school English course. I have been asked the question, how do you cite something in APA in this class? So it, it's very low level. Everyone passes it. We had a midterm, it was open book. We have a final, it's also open book and people tend to do really well on it. Yeah, so Math 264, and BMIG 220. You take them together and it's basically combining Math 253, which is multivariable calculus, and electromagnetism from first year. It's rough. It is the worst course in BMIG. Like notoriously, people fail it constantly. And it's a five credit course. It, you have it every day. It's horrible. There's, there's really no, no way to get around it. Like it's just horrible and you suffer through it and then you form really good connections with people because you can just say, hey, we make 220, am I right? But yeah, I, I think there's two midterms and one final in that course, but we shall see. I haven't suffered through it yet. This is definitely the worst course that I've ever taken. <laughs> I'm going to be so honest. It was horrible. It was the most disorganized course I've ever attended in my life. Most of the lectures were irrelevant to what we were being tested on, on the final and the midterms. There was one midterm and one final, and they were both open chat GPT. So what do you study? Nothing. I didn't study for that course. <laughs> I didn't study one bit. And I mean, the prof was nice, don't get me wrong. Shout out to Vikram, but he was not very organized. You never really knew what was happening in the course. Like you didn't know when the deadlines were. You didn't know when the lab was. There was supposed to be a lab. I don't think anyone went to it because like it just didn't happen. And a lot of the assignments, we could persuade him to make them for completion, not for marks. So that's kind of the, the standard for that course. It's it's just a course to have on your transcript, I'm convinced. Like it, it has no relevance. That is my design course. I was like, this is the one I always forget about. Not because it was bad. I loved that course. It's a hazy memory. What can I say? That course is cool though. The prof is really nice. We love Calvin. He's great. They put you in randomized teams and they'll give like a broad biomedical engineering problem 
and then four subtopics, and depending on your TA, you'll get a given subtopic. I personally had a really, really good group for this course, and I'm really grateful for it because I think I would have suffered a lot if it wasn't a big group because the whole point of the course is that at the end you have a 130 something page report to submit. You're compiling the report throughout the entire semester and then you present your findings at the end of the semester. So it's a lot of work. There's no midterm and there's no final for this course. It's all project based and it's all assignment based. So I really liked that aspect. It was really nice to have a course where I did not have to do a midterm or a final. And I think I learned a lot more in that regard as well. And in that course, they are very picky about how you justify things because they like to say, well, in the real world, people are gonna grill you for things. And I appreciate that. However, having to justify really innocuous things is hard to do. <laughs> Um, I took Phys 158 because I failed and then I failed that again, so that's cool. I just can't pass that course. It doesn't like me very much. I also took BMAG 402, which is sustainability and impacts of biomedical engineering on the world. The professor for that course is Rashmi Prakash, and if you ever have the pleasure of meeting her in person, please say, send her all of my good wishes. She's, I would say, the best prof at UBC. That's, that's a bold statement from me, but she is actually outstanding. That course has no midterms, no exams. It's just three hours of lecture a week. You sit in class, you don't know what you're gonna learn that week, and she just like pulls out topics that she thinks are interesting, which I personally really enjoyed, and she also made a point to bring in a lot of guest lecturers to speak on different sustainability issues. Um, there was a lot of presenting in that course, which I'm personally a fan of. I love a good presentation and a lot of research. It's a very, very easy course. It is the only course I've ever gotten above 90 in. So high praise for Rashmi. It's it's just awesome. I'm really glad I took it last semester because I, I really needed a course to boost my self-esteem. For BMEG courses, no, because there's only one section for each of them. So what you get is what you get. In terms of CPEN and math, I think we were only allowed to register for one section. If you're taking math 256, don't do Miranda's section. If you don't want to be um, absolutely decimated on everything except the final exam. It is pretty set in stone. Unless you're doing non-BMEG courses, it's pretty much just, here's the prof you get, here's the section you get. You just have to deal with it. And I mean, it's, it's nice in a way because that means you're kind of traveling with your cohort and you get to know everyone really well. And there, it's also not like there's any bad profs in BMEG. I would never call any of our profs bad. It's just the courses that would be challenging or disorganized. It's, it's pretty okay. First term workload. That was the heaviest workload I've ever had in my life. It was 21 credits. First year, I think the highest I had in one semester was 19 credits. So it was like an extra course. It was a lot. I had basically no free time in first term, which was not fun. So I balanced it out with taking 17 credits in second term. That was really nice. I actually could leave campus. But first term is also known as the worst term overall in BMEG. So if you get through that, you'll get through your degree. It's just a test. It's just a challenge. Most difficult BMEG 220. I know this and I haven't even taken it. It's that bad. I could, like people in upper years cannot stress enough how hard BMEG 220 is. They love talking about it. Easiest course in second year, BMEG 201. I can see BMEG 201 being a first year course. Like it is that easy. It's been really nice to take that over the summer. It's like, wow, I feel like I'm doing something when really I'm not really doing anything. Yes, in second semester there is room because most people only take four courses. I have, I know some people who took three in second semester. So if you wanted to, you could take an elective. I took my arts elective in second semester. I took Anthropology 205, Insurrections and Revolutions. Great course, loved it. It was super interesting. And it was so fun because it was a break from my science-y courses. So I would walk in and pretend to be an art student. So there is room if you want to. You just have to make sure you meet all the prereqs. 
Be make 220 and math 264. <laughs> yeah, life, life hack, just fail Phys 158 and then you won't have to do it. It is pretty okay to like drop and swap courses in BMEG. You just have to be aware of prerequisites for upper year courses because most of second year courses is just getting prerequisites out of the way for third and fourth year. And if you're someone like me who's planning on extending their degree anyway, it's not really an issue because you can just kind of like bump things up to the next year, but it can be a bit of a challenge if you're planning on keeping within like the four year timeline. If you're taking CPEN 221, do the boot camp that they offer over the summer. There's a Java boot camp that they do for like three weeks in August. The people I've talked to that have taken it said it helped them significantly with that course. Other than that, there's not really anything you can do to prepare. You just have to be aware that you're gonna have to put in a lot of effort and you're gonna have to study and you're gonna have to pay attention in class. I think compared to other programs, our co-op program is way less competitive. Everyone I've talked to that applied to co-op has gotten in, so I don't think it's that competitive, but there is still that fear that like UBC instills in you, like what if I don't get in though? But I think if you have like the 65 GPA minimum, they just kind of let you in, they don't mind. The, the real problem is actually finding jobs. I think it has been slightly helpful. My co-op advisor is lovely. She's awesome. I am a student who's from out of province, so my biggest concern with co-op was not so much trying to get a job because I have had a lot of experience in the past. It was, where do I look for a job? And my co-op advisor was really helpful for that in letting me know of like what different companies I could be looking at in Vancouver, which is super awesome because I actually ended up getting a job with one of them. Number one, get your 65 GPA minimum, and then don't worry about your GPA. You only need 65, they don't care if you have above 65. My second tip is have work experience. Just like one really good reference can be enough to set you over the edge. And then my other piece of advice is do something fun. Join a really fun extracurricular. I'm on Engineers Without Borders and it is genuinely just, I love it. I make spreadsheets, that's my job, it's awesome. It's given me a lot of translatable skills to the job that I'm gonna be working in and that's been really helpful. So just find something you're passionate about because that's gonna speak more to an interviewer than something you're just doing for a resume item. So Engineers Without Borders is the only charitable organization under the Engineering Undergraduate Society umbrella. And we are really focused on reducing inequity in our world. So we have four different ventures focusing on youth outreach, design, and mental health on campus. And my role with Engineers Without Borders is VP Finance. So I oversee all of our budgets, all of our financial planning. And right now we're actually planning a conference to be happening in November. November tentatively. So if anyone watching this wants a fun lunch and to learn something cool, exchange, keep an eye out. Super great club. It's a really good community. Everyone's really, really nice. If you're not looking for a design team, but you are looking to get involved with the engineering community, it's a great option. I also have another extracurricular if you want me to talk about that. In second year, I was on the Place Vanier Residence Association. Pro tip to anyone, your residence association can get you guaranteed housing. So if you lived somewhere in first year and wouldn't mind living there again, get elected for the residence association. It's super fun. I personally had a really good time with my residence association. We did a lot of cool events. I was VP external, so I was responsible for hyping everyone up and making posters on Canva, which was so fun. I loved it. And we also did a lot of social events, so my fellow association members are my friends now, so now I have a lot more friends. It has provided me with a lot of good experience. It gives me credibility for organization and communication skills. It also has made me very savvy with Excel and other like G Suite, Microsoft Office type things, which is something you need now because everything's online. It's also just been really fun to do my little design as VP external, which oddly enough has also been really helpful for my job search. It's like, oh, I was, I was really good at graphic design. People love that in engineers. It's like, oh, you can make designs. Oh, you can also make them pretty, cool, awesome. Other things are just, Team skills are a huge one, especially being on a council. It was a semi-formal council, so we had to use like Robert's rules, we did voting, we did debates, it was a whole thing. 
So that has been super helpful just for my people skills as well. VP external, VP finance, they're both leadership positions. So it's also been really good for my leadership skills and being able to take initiative. Okay, number one survival tip. Fail Fizz 158. You make your life so much easier if you fail that course. That's my number one survival tip. Number two is keep your friends close. I had a really, really horrible time in second semester of second year and my support system that I had going was really, really helpful for me. Having friends in general is just really good because they get you through the tough times and they also get you through the fun times too because they're fun to hang out with people on the weekend. You know, you can't do school all the time as I've learned. So so I've been told. Another survival tip is go to sleep. Go to sleep and try not to fuel your life on stimulants. I know a lot of people who have developed caffeine addictions in their time at university and they're not having fun. I personally recommend sleeping. It's great and it helps you learn. Scientifically proven, you can look it up. On that note, also definitely drink water and eat. You know, all those things like your parents tell you and you don't want to believe them. It's true, unfortunately. Do you hate when they're right? The Meg 230. The yeah. Meg 250. Listen, if you see a diagram of an eye, you know. You just know. Favorite prof. It's it's gotta be either Pavel Kudzia or Rashmi Prakash. I feel bad saying it. I, I gotta go with Vikram. Sorry, Dr. Yudov. You tried your best. I wish I had known how to pace myself. I think I worked myself very hard in first semester and I just had no energy left in second. So definitely taking breaks is a good idea and trying to find little pockets of time where you can just do fun things is really helpful. Exam week, December, first semester. Because every single day, me and four of my friends went to West Mall Swing Space, everyone's favorite building, no one's favorite building. And we sat in one of the classrooms and we studied for all of our exams in that room. And it was to the point where we got delirious. It was so funny. We also had a soundtrack if Anyone is watching this who is curious? Vaping in Vegas by Wolves of Glendale. It's a great song, and every time I listen to it, it makes me want to study now. So, highly recommend. Absolutely not. Be Meg all the way. Be Meg all the way. <laughs> And that's pretty much everything you need to know before heading into second year biomedical engineering at UBC. I just want to say a huge thank you to Rachel for helping me with this video and for sharing her experiences in second year. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.